so hello everyone uh, welcome to the new session so in this session we are going to start with the inverse z transforms okay so till now we have discussed all the z transforms all the standard uh, functions definition also some of uh, nearly one eight to nine problems related to z transforms and also from initial and final uh, value uh, problems okay so now again we are going to start with the inverse z transform this is uh, actually an easy concept if we know the z transforms very thoroughly we can crack this inverse z transform so what does this say if u of z is a z transform of u of n then the inverse z transform of u of z is equal to u of n that is z if the z transform of u of n u of n is equal to u of z then the z inverse of u of z is equal to u of n that is this is z transform right if this if we take this z transform to another side this becomes z inverse this z transform is in one side of u of n so now let's take this z transform to another side so this becomes z transform of inverse that is z inverse of u of z this z transform goes here so this will be directly equal to u of n okay that's it so now we have some of the important formulas which we need to remember in case of z transform that is z inverse of z by z minus 1 is equal to 1 same thing we know that uh, let's take this z inverse to another side if you take this z inverse to another side so this becomes z transform of 1 right and we know that z transform of 1 is z by z minus 1 same thing in all the general formulas we need to make the changes again z inverse of z by z minus a is equal to a power n again if we take this z inverse to another side it becomes z transform of a power n and we know that z transform of a power n is equal to z by z minus a the same thing in all the general cases okay so z inverse of a z divided by z minus a whole square is equal to n into a power n uh, z inverse of a z square plus a square z divided by z minus a the whole cube is equal to n square into a power n and z inverse of a z cube plus 4 a square z square plus a cube z divided by z minus a whole to the power 4 is equal to n cube into a power n so similarly we have for all of this that is z z inverse of z by z minus 1 whole square is equal to n and z by z minus 1 whole cube is equal to n square z by z minus 1 whole to the power 4 is equal to n cube z by z square plus 1 is equal to sin n pi by 2 okay you please make a note of this z square by z square plus 1 is equal to cos n pi by 2 okay I, we, I have some 10 important formulas so please uh, make a note of these 10 formulas as we are going to apply this in our future problems okay yeah Okay, so now we have another concept that is inverse z transform using partial fractions. So you guys might have been uh, heard about these partial fraction rules in your uh, integral subject in second PUC. Also in the second sem you had a Laplace transform module. In that you guys have used these concepts of partial fractions. Similarly, in the Z transform also, uh, we are going to uh, solve some problems related to the partial fractions. Okay. So, uh, there is a slight change in uh, some of the rules uh, of calculating the partial fraction here. So, now let us uh, see that. If G of Z contains a linear factor of the form Z minus A, Z minus A whole square, Z minus A whole cube. So, we have to take the numerator as Z a z a z square plus a square z a z cube plus 4 a square z square plus a cube z so on okay so here the thing is if in the denominator we have it as z minus a then we need to take uh, uh, the then we need to take the numerator as only z okay so let's take an example if i have one term like this i'll write it here uh, z divided by z minus 1 into z minus 2 whole square so how we are going to write its partial fraction okay so we know that first we need to write it as a divided by z minus 1 plus b divided by z minus 2 plus c divided by z minus 2 whole square this is generally how we write okay so now in this case what we need to do is wherever the, the numerator is in the form of z minus 1 right 
in that case we need to multiply a by z we need to add one z here same case here if there is z this is in the form z minus 2 so the value of uh, uh, this is 2 right so again we need to multiply z and now it is z minus 2 whole square see i, I have right if we have z minus a whole square right we need to multiply the you know in, uh, numerator by a into z but the value of a here is 2 right so we have to write 2 into z similarly if we have the cube term we need to uh, multiply by az square plus a square z okay this is the general formula and then then again we need to compute the values for a b and c respectively that uh, we have studied i have uh, i'll tell you that in time of solving the problems and then after finding the a b and c we need to compute the z inverse of u of z okay so this was all about partial fractions so now we'll solve a few problems related to these partial fractions in order to make you clear about this concept okay okay so now we'll start with the problems the, so the first problem is we need to find the inverse z transform of 2z square plus 3z divided by z plus 2 into z minus 4 okay and now we need uh, let's write the u of z we know that the u of z is equal to this term that is i have written it here okay okay so now let's uh, use the partial fraction rule we know that divided by z plus 2 into z minus 4 okay so now generally we write it as a into z plus 2 plus b into z minus 4 right but in this case we i have told you that if there is a it, if it is of the form z plus a and z minus a uh, we need to multiply z to the numerator right so i have done the same thing and now uh, let's consider this as equation star okay so now we need to make uh, in order to make uh, we need to make these uh, two numerators uh, denominators cancel out each other for that we need to take the, the lcm for this term okay in order to find the values for a and b okay so now let's take the lcm for this term so this becomes az into cross multiply z minus 4 plus bz into z plus 2 divided by z plus 2 into z minus 4 so these uh, two denominators gets cancelled out so the remaining terms are 2z square plus 3z is equal to az into z minus 4 plus bz into z plus 2 okay so now let's take this equation as equation 1 so now we need to find the values for a and b okay so in order to find the values for a and b we need to substitute some of the values for z okay so now let's uh, first find the value for b okay if you can do it in any case you can first find the a as well so i let's prefer i prefer to find the value of b first okay so in order to find the value for of b right we need to make this term equal to zero such a way that we need to uh, such a way we need to substitute the value for z in order to make this term equal to zero so how to make this term equal to zero in order to make this term equal to zero we can make this term equal to zero right we know that any anything into zero is zero so how to make this term equal to zero it's simple see it's z minus 4 right in order to make this is equal to zero we need to substitute the value of z as 4 right if we substitute the value of z is equal to 4 and uh, there th then we can write it as 4 minus 4 is equal to 0 so if this becomes 0 automatically az into 0 is 0 so we can neglect this term to find the value for of b okay so in similar way we need to find solve all these problems okay so first we need to put the value of z is equal to 4 in order to make this term equal to 0 okay wherever there is z right in this whole equation we need to put the value of z as 4 okay so now let's put that 2 into z square that is 4 square plus 3 into 4 is equal to a into 4 
इंटू फोर माइनस फोर प्लस बी इंटू फोर इंटू फोर प्लस टू सो नाउ लेट सॉल्व दिस फोर स्क्वेर इज सिक्सटीन सिक्सटीन टू सा थर्टी टू थर्टी टू प्लस थ्री फोर सा ट्वेल्व थर्टी टू प्लस ट्वेल्व इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी फोर इज इक्वल टू फोर ए इंटू जीरो प्लस फोर बी इंटू सिक्स सो दिस बिकम जीरो फोर्टी फोर इज इक्वल टू फोर इंटू सिक्स ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फोर बी देर फोर बी इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी फोर बाई ट्वेंटी फोर सो वी कैन यूज द फोर टेबल सो द फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ बी विच वी गॉट इज इलेवन बाई सिक्स बाई पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ जेड इज इक्वल टू फोर सिमिलरली इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ ए राइट वी नीड टू मेक दिस टर्म इक्वल टू जीरो सो ना हाउ टू मेक दिस टर्म इक्वल टू जीरो सेम थिंग वी नीड टू मेक दिस टर्म इक्वल टू जीरो ओके सो हियर वी हैव जेड प्लस टू हाउ टू मेक दिस जीरो लेट्स पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ जेड एज माइनस टू इफ यू पुट जेड एज माइनस टू वी गेट माइनस टू प्लस टू दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो जीरो इन टू एनी थिंग इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी कैन मेक दिस टर्म जीरो सो इन द सेकेंड केस वी नीड टू पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ जेड इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू ओके ओके सो नाउ लेट्स टू इंटू माइनस टू होल स्क्वेयर प्लस थ्री इंटू माइनस टू इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू ए माइनस टू माइनस फोर माइनस टू बी माइनस टू प्लस टू दिस इज जीरो राइट वी कैन डायरेक्टली राइट इट एज जीरो सो नाउ लेट्स ऑल दिस माइनस टू होल स्क्वेयर इज प्लस फोर फोर टू जै एट माइनस सिक्स दैट इज टू is equal to minus 2a into minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6 2 is equal to minus 2 into minus 6 is plus 12 right 12 by a therefore a is equal to 2 by 12 is equal to 1 by 6 so we found the value of a as 1 by 6 okay now let's substitute the value of a and b in which we have taken a, a equation star right so now let's see what the equation star becomes So this is a required equation star. That is 2z square plus 3z divided by z plus 2 into z minus 4 is equal to the value of a is now 1 by 6, right? So let's write that 1 by 6 first outside into z by z plus 2 plus the value of b is 11 by 6 into z by z minus 4. So now nothing. Uh, now in this case we need to take z trans uh, z inverse on both the sides. Okay. By taking z inverse of both the sides, let's just take z inverse on both sides. By taking z inverse of both sides, we get the required question. That is, we need to find the z inverse of this side. So, uh, similarly, we can uh, z inverse on this side. We'll, let's take it and we'll find the required z inverse of this term. Okay. Here, so if we take z inverse on for this term, uh, uh, the linear property says that this constant term we need to take outside. Okay. So now we'll solve that. So what we get? Z inverse of 1 by 6 into z by z plus 2 plus z inverse of 11 by 6 into z by z minus 4. Now, uh, the as per the linear property, let's take the constant terms outside. 1 by 6 into z inverse of z by z plus 2 plus 11 by 6 into the inverse of z by z minus 4. Okay, so now let's uh, take the z inverse. So let's uh, if we take the z inverse of z by z plus 2. But the formula we have it as z by z minus a, right? Z by z minus a. The z inverse of z by z minus a is equal to a power n. But we have it as z by z plus two, so we can say that this is equal to z by z minus of minus two. That is z by z minus of a. So the value of a here is minus two. Therefore, the z inverse we can write it as minus two to the power n. Similarly, here z by uh, z inverse of z by z minus four. This is straightforward. Z by z minus a. In place of a, there is four. So this is equal to four power n. So this is your required inverse Z transform of the 
partial fraction which is given in the question okay similarly we are going to solve three to four problems related to this partial fraction in order to make you clear about the concept okay uh, we'll get to the next question okay so this is the second question of the partial fraction concept the question is z inverse of 5z divided by 2 minus z into 3z minus 1 okay so now let's uh, apply the partial fraction rule so what does it say and since there is no square term so this directly we can multiply z in the numerator divided by 2 minus z plus b into z divided by 3z minus 1 uh, consider this as equation star now in order to make the denominators equal and to cancel them we need to uh, apply the lcm for this this term okay so it becomes az into 3z minus 1 cross multiply plus bz into 2 minus z divided by 2 minus z into 3z minus 1 so that we can cancel these terms so the required terms are 5z is equal to az into 3z minus 1 plus bz into 2 minus z okay let's consider this as uh, some equation 1 so now again it's the same procedure to find the values for a and b so the first uh, we'll find the value for a so in order to find the value of a we need to make the value for this term as equal to 0 how to make this term equal to 0 uh, we in order to make this term equal to 0 here we need to substitute the value of 2 as z as 2 so since it becomes 2 minus 2 will be equal to 0 ok so now first we need to put the value of z is equal to 2 so 5 into 2 is 10 a into 2 3 into 2 is 6 minus 1 plus this term becomes 0 right I, I directly write it as 0 2a into 5 therefore 10 is equal to 10a so therefore the value of a we have got is 1 so similarly again we need to find the value for b so in order to find the value for b we need to make this term equal to 0 so how to make this term equal to 0 so now this is a tricky part so how we can make this term equal to 0 we need to make this term equal to 0 but in place of z we don't have only z here we have 3z so now let's try to equate this so how to make uh, this term equal to 0 so we need to substitute the value of z here as 1 by 3 ok if we substitute the value of z here as 1 by 3 what we get so now let's I'll substitute here as 1 by 3 3 into 1 by 3 so this 3 3 gets cancelled what is remaining 1 and 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 right right so here we need to substitute the value of z as 1 by 3 ok so now let's substitute the value of z as 1 by 3 here in this equation 5 into 1 by 3 is equal to 5 by 3 1 by 3 a 3 into 1 by 3 minus 1 plus 1 by 3 b 2 minus 1 by 3 so this term we know that it will become 0 therefore 5 by 3 is equal to b by 3 into uh, let's take the lcm uh, 2 by 2 3 is a 6 minus 1 by 3 that is equal to 5 by 3 so 5 by 3 is equal to 5b by 9 so now let's cross multiply 9 5 is a 45 is equal to 3 5 is a 15b Therefore, b is equal to 45 by 15. 15 ones are 15, 3 is are. Therefore, the final value of b which we get is b is equal to 3. So, now we have got the values for a and b. So, now let's substitute them in equation star. Yeah. So, we substituted the value of a and b in equation star. So, now again we need to take uh, the z inverse on both sides in order to find the required z inverse of this function. Okay. So if let's take the z inverse but in order if you want to take the z inverse right we need to convert this term in the form of 
z by z minus a but this term is not in the form of z minus a it's z by 2 minus z okay the first value of a is first and then it is z so how to take this as a z by in order to uh, in this form that is z by z minus a so how we can take it is we can write it as z by minus of z minus 2 so if we do this if, uh, if we do minus of z minus 2 see uh, let's multiply minus so it becomes minus z minus into minus is plus 2 that is same as uh, minus z plus 2 that is same as 2 minus z if we uh, interchange the terms we can uh, directly write it as 2 minus z so we need to write it as minus of z minus 2 that becomes uh, then we can write it in this form that is z by z minus a similarly for the second term that is 3 into z inverse of this is a, this is also again not in the form of z by z minus a so how to bring it in this form so we can bring this in this form by taking this 3 outside 3z minus 1 right if we take this 3 outside we can write it as z by z minus we took 3 outside right so this becomes 1 by 3 okay so now again this is of the form z by z minus a okay so now this 3 3 gets cancelled so we can write it as this so let's take this minus outside this is actually minus 1 which is a constant we can take it outside so minus of z inverse of z by z minus 2 plus z inverse of z by z minus 1 by 3 so this is directly uh, uh, similar to the formula directly we have the value of a as 2 and uh, a as 1 by 3 so we can write it as minus of 2 power n plus 1 by 3 power n so this is your required z inverse z transform of the partial fraction okay so hope uh, you got an uh, idea about this concept by, uh, by looking at these two problems so similarly we have few more complicated problems so we are going to solve them so now this is your next question uh, this is a very very important question and this question is repeated in uh, many of the question papers okay so please make a note of this and please listen to this question very carefully okay this is a bit tricky so i'm going to explain this in a very clear manner so that you can uh, understand so here we can see that in this question the value of in the value of u of z so observe the denominator that is it is equal to 4 minus z the whole cube here we can observe that this is not of the form uh, z minus a right again in order to make this as a z minus a whole cube we can write it as like this see u of z is equal to uh, 8z minus z cube is equal to uh, divided by so now let's again uh, as we did in our pre previous problem let's uh, interchange the positions that is z minus 4 whole cube with the minus sign okay but this bit uh, looks a bit odd right so we can uh, uh, again we can change the interchange the positions in the numerator as well so how it becomes is minus of z cube minus 8z divided by minus of z minus 4 whole cube so that we can cancel this minus and we can uh, um, uh, write the value of u of z is equal to z cube minus a z divided by z minus 4 whole cube okay this is equal to this okay we have just uh, interchanged the positions and cancelled some uh, negative terms in order to get a simpler term uh, so that we can uh, make the problem easier okay so now for this term we need to apply the partial fraction and we need to find the values for a b and c okay okay so now let's solve yeah. so we have uh, written this in form of partial fraction okay since in the denominator we have z minus 4 whole cube right we have only one single term so we should write it as first we need to write it as a z divided by z minus 4 so we know that if there is a, a single power 1 we need to multiply uh, the numerator by z if there is z minus 4 whole square we need to multiply the numerator by az where the value of a here is 4 
and if we have z minus 4 whole cube we need to multiply the numerator by a z square plus a square z ok so a square z means the value of a is here 4 right so a square is 16 4 square 16 z plus 4 z square ok and uh, name it as equation star so in order to cancel out cancel the new denominator we need to take the lcm so the required lcm we get is so in order to equate this to z minus 4 whole cube let's try to equate all of these to z minus 4 whole cube so if, if we want to equate this as z minus 4 whole cube we need to have here z minus 4 whole square right since we already have z minus 4 here in order to make it as z minus 4 whole cube we need to multiply another z minus 4 twice plus b into 4z into z minus 4 since we have z minus 4 whole square plus this uh, remains as it is c into 16z plus 4z square divided by z minus 4 whole cube so the required uh, remaining term we get is az into z minus 4 whole square plus 4bz into z minus 4 plus 16cz plus 4cz square so here again uh, in order to make this uh, term easier we can do uh, one more step we can add one more step that is in both the sides we can take z common outside ok let's take z common outside here what are the remaining terms is z square minus z and you can take z common outside here as well so what are the remaining terms a into this z goes so z minus 4 whole square plus this z goes 4b into z minus 4 plus c into this z goes so 16 remains plus 1z goes outside so the remaining term is 4z ok so we can cancel these two z here so now the remaining terms are z square minus a is equal to a into z minus 4 whole square plus 4b into z minus 4 plus c into 16 plus 4z now let's consider this as equation so now here we can see that in order to find the values for a b and c we cannot put any of the terms uh, equal to, uh, directly we cannot compute any of the z terms in order to make the other terms as zero okay so here what we need to do is Uh, we can uh, first we can uh, take uh, only one term that is c so in order to find c in order to find c we need to make these two terms equal to 0 we can do that see if we put the value of uh, z as 4 these two terms will equal be equal to 0 4 minus 4 whole square 0 4 minus 4 here we can take make these two terms equal to 0 but to find the values for a and b so if you want to find the value for a similarly we need to make these two terms equal to zero right but we cannot make these two terms we can make this term equal to zero but we cannot make this term equal to zero this term equal to zero and similarly if you want to find the value for b we need to make these two terms equal to zero right we can make this equal to zero but we cannot make this equal to zero so for this case we have one uh, rule so in we need to follow and we have used this in a uh, in your previous concepts as well during Laplace and uh, the partial fraction problems okay so now let's uh, let's continue to solve this uh, so that uh, you'll, you'll understand solving these problems okay so in order to find the value of C uh, we can uh, put Z equal to 4 so the remaining term is Z square minus 8 so 4 square minus 8 is 8 16 minus 8 is 8 to a into 4 minus 4 whole square plus 4b into 4 minus 4 
प्लस सी इंटू सिक्सटीन प्लस फोर इंटू फोर ओके सो दिस दीज टू टर्म्स विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो सी इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन प्लस फोर फोर द सिक्सटीन सो एट इज इक्वल टू थर्टी टू सी देर फोर सी इज इक्वल टू एट बाई थर्टी टू एट वन जा एट फोर जा सो वी गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ सी एस वन बाई फोर सो नो द वी आर फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ सी नो सो नो वी नीड टू फाइंड द वैल्यूज फॉर ए एंड बी सो वी कैन फाइंड द वैल्यूज फॉर ए एंड बी by comparing the coefficients of z square first we need to start from z square in equation 1 whatever we have written in box right here in equation 1 okay we need to just compare the coefficients of z square wherever there is z square right uh, what and all the coefficients are there in place of z square we need to write it as it is and then we can find the values for a and b respectively okay so now let's uh, compare the coefficients of z square in equation 1 so in the left hand side we have z square minus 8 right so there we can say th that the coefficient of z square in the left hand side is 1 and there is another term 8 so we cannot consider that okay wherever z square is there right that only terms we need to consider okay and the next term is a into z minus 4 whole square so now let's uh, split that term if we split that term we get a into Z square minus 8 Z plus 16. If we use the identity, uh, Z minus 4 whole square. Okay. So now in this, the coefficient of Z square here is a. So here, uh, if we multiply a to the whole term, so then it becomes a Z square, right? So here the coefficient of Z square is a. Okay. Into one. We can write it as a into one. And in the next term, that is 4 b into Z minus 4. There is no Z square term. And here also there is no z square term, so this is the required uh, what what we say uh, terms which we have. So now from these terms we need to calculate the value for a, right? Since only we have a, we don't have any b and c term. Okay, so now directly we can write it as one is equal to a into one is a. Therefore we can write it as a is equal to one. Okay, so now we have done with comparing the coefficients of z square. So now we have the values of c and a. So the remaining value is b so now z square is done right so now we need to compare the coefficients of z in equation 1 okay so now let's uh, let's compare the coefficients of z because uh, whatever whatever the equation we have written in box right in that the highest degree we have is z square after that we need to reduce the degrees in order to find the other values remaining values so now we need to compare the coefficients of z so in equation 1 now we need to compare the coefficients of z in z terms so we can write it as 0 is equal to so here now we have a into z square minus 8 z plus 16 so here the coefficient of z is minus 8 right so we we'll write first minus 8 into a Okay, if we multiply a, we get it as minus eight a z, right? So minus eight a plus four b. We have here four b into z minus four, right? So the coefficient of z here, the here is four b plus four c. Okay. So now uh, bring this eight a to one side. Eight a is equal to four b plus four c. Eight into a. The value of a here is one, right? So eight is equal to 4b plus 4 into the value of c is 1 by 4, so 8 is equal to 4b plus 1. So bring this 8 to a, a 1 to another side. 8 minus 1 is equal to 4b. 7 is equal to 4b. Therefore, the value of b we get finally by comparing the coefficients of z is 7 by 4. Okay. So like this we need to solve this problem. So now here we got the all the three values of a, b, and c. So now uh, we need to substitute them in equation star. So this is your required equation star. So again we need to take the z inverse. So directly I'll write the z inverse. So z inverse of z by z minus four plus seven by four common constant 
फोर जेड डिवाइडेड बाई जेड माइनस फोर होल स्क्वेर प्लस वन बाई फोर जेड इनवर्स ऑफ फोर जेड स्क्वेर प्लस सिक्सटीन जेड डिवाइडेड बाई जेड माइनस फोर होल क्यू ओके सो नाउ वी नो दैट जेड इनवर्स ऑफ जेड बाई जेड माइनस फोर इज फोर पावर एन प्लस सेवन बाई फोर इंटू जेड इनवर्स ऑफ फोर जेड डिवाइडेड बाई जेड माइनस फोर होल स्क्वेयर दैट करस्पॉन्ड्स टू ए जेड डिवाइडेड बाई जेड माइनस ए होल स्क्वेयर राइट हियर द वैल्यू ऑफ ए हियर इज बाई कंपेरिंग वी गेट इट एज फोर सो वी नो दैट ए जेड डिवाइडेड बाई जेड माइनस ए होल स्क्वेयर इट्स इनवर्स इज इज इक्वल टू एन इंटू ए पावर एन सो इन प्लेस ऑफ ए देर इज फोर राइट सो एन इंटू फोर पावर एन सिमिलरली this is equal to n square into a power n but the value of uh, a here is 4 so n square into 4 power n so this is your required z transform so you can say take few terms common here so here we can see that 4 power n is common right for all of them so take that 4 power n outside and write the remaining terms 1 plus 7n by 4 plus n square by 4 so this is your required z transform of this question okay so this is a very important question so please uh, make a note of this and uh, please practice this question because this question might be asked if not this question similar type related to this question also might be asked okay so that's all for today's session we will continue in the next session thank you